Welcome back. Just before the break, we were talking about uh, Sir William Beveridge Foundation. I'll just take a break from that topic. Uh, our guest, Mr. Raman Jilani, has also some part of his uh, personality is he has uh, been a journalist of print and electronic media. Uh, he has taught also and uh, would like to be called an academic. He doesn't talk about it, but I know that he is. So let's talk about how did you get into journalism? Well, when I was at, uh, at the University of Dhaka, my, you know, mm -hmm. um, as a student in right. the Pakistan period, I, I was actually involved with Doinik Bangla right. as a correspondent. Right. But that was something like an excitement, things yeah. like that. But later on, uh, I have actually fallen in love with journalism. Uh -huh. Although I didn't have a chance to go to a course or something like that, but then again, uh, I was always there was a postgraduate diploma in journalism at Dhaka at that time. I could have done that at that yeah. time, but I was busy with my because my uh, I was actually a student of politics mm -hmm. or political science, yeah. as you say, you yeah. know. and then later on public administration, this and mm -hmm. that. So mm -hmm. I didn't have a chance to go to other short courses, and at that in our period at that time we didn't have any evening courses or something right, like yeah. that. But I loved journalism. Mm -hmm. I loved to be in touch with what is happening why it is happening, right. why not it is happening in other parts. Right. So a comparative study within my brain frame was right. always there, you know. And I continued with the request of Bajlu Bhai, Bajlu Bhai, he was the editor of uh, Doinik Shangbad, right. um, who died. He's a veteran journalist. Very you became their correspondent from uh, London, Western yes. Europe. So he made me the Western Europe um, the correspondent for Doinik Shangbat. Right. Uh, although requests were there to be from, from others, but I have chosen Doinik Shangbat because mm -hmm. I always, you know, uh, I always treated that newspaper as a prestigious one, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I was working with them, but, uh, and also writing, but my Bengali was not that good. Mm -hmm. You know, my English was a bit better than my own Bengali, I must say that. So I used to do that uh, any news coming up, I was writing in English, but Bozlubai was kind enough to translate it quickly right. and send it. And, but I always tried to be a little bit away from the f name and fame and all this uh, correspondent, right. UK correspondent, something like that. You mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but you also wrote for Janamath here. Yes, I mean, some of my articles have been published, which used to be published in Shangbad over there. Mm -hmm. They were also published pu published it in John here yep. because it's a, a right newspaper for that in those days. Yep. Yep. So that the Bengali or Bangladeshi newspaper is not always available here. So right. I think see, see. because most of my writings were right. in connection with our life here mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. a comparative mm -hmm. studies yep. and socioeconomic jargons and things like that for which That we is very much necessary. That's right. So I was in touch. Now this uh, this diaspora that uh, we see uh, all over the world, I mean, Bangladeshi diaspora, I mean, whether you go to Middle East, whether you go to Malaysia, whether you go to uh, the North America, or with Canada, United States, in this country, all over Europe, we are everywhere. And wherever we have gone, we have created an impression on the society. UK not being an exception, see. Now, do you think that we have been able to achieve what we wanted? I mean, there have been restrictions from the host community sometimes. I mean, there are oppositions from the political groups. Uh, we, have we tried to integrate or are we still trying to remain within our own cocoon type of world? And, and do we integrate? Should we integrate more? I'm not talking about assimilation. I'm talking about integration because we live in this society. Keeping our, the, our own, or, or living with our own traditions, culture, language, that's very good to see. But then again, we see that some of our young people, young persons have come to join the main politics, mainstream politics, but we still need a lot more see, to join, if not at the national level, join at the local level, at the, at the, at the Council level, politics, in the media, 
where they can be seen. Yes, he is a Bangladeshi. We have made, there are some people here and there, see, but not enough. What would be your advice? I am hopeful. <clears throat> you see, the attitude that we had in previous generations, earning some money and going home, yep. is not happening now. No. Okay. No, that's finished. So, that's finished. So, you see the psychological force behind that, and also it will work within our community, because if you look at South Asian community as such, you will see that our parents are taking a lot of interest about the education these days than any right. other communities right. in this mm. country. So this will give a positive result. Okay. Education is very good. Right. But I'm talking about we should also guide them to the right professions, you see. Yes. Now, the th that's what I was coming at. So when you have education, mm -hmm. your mind opens. So don't expect it that it will happen overnight like that. I will say comparative, if we make, if we make a comparative study between communities, uh, achievements of various communities right. or diasporas from various parts of the world, you know, I will say we have done quite we good. Have done, we have done very we well. Have done yes, well. We have done well. better than some communities. Yes, and we are very young at right. that rate. Now, our community will consolidate they are learning from their own past mistakes, mm -hmm. things like that. But as a social worker, I would say the word integration, you say that. Well, I don't think that we are disintegrated. No. You must remember that this is a multiracial community. Okay. At the same time, I'm British, but by the time we are British Muslim. So Islamic cultures and Islamic religion and the tradition and heritage also influences us. Now, there are two things into that, bad influence, good influence, okay? So, bad people will be always bad, good people will always be good. Nowhere in Quran it has been said that you be a bad person, but unfortunately... Well, well no holy book says no, that. No holy book will say that, but people are misusing that. I think the understanding of this, quote unquote, understanding of this particular teaching by our younger generation and the others. It will take little time, but I think... We do we, have a responsibility as we seniors. We will, definitely. The, as a, in the host community, we have our also responsibility because this is our land now. We are here. We are not going from here. This is the truth of it. But we will try to remain as us, as a British, as well. No, this is so the this younger is, generation... This is a dichotomy. I think the future generation will sort it out. Between yeah, 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 that's right. The younger generation is much more pragmatic, much more practical. They understand these things, you see. It's we who have these uh, fantastic ideas, see, of a golden uh, land where uh, we will go back and we will retire and we will be pensioners there, you see. No, this is the land. We have decided to come over here. Let's be here 100%. See, of course we can go for holidays. We go there. We have got our own house, our own village and all that. Do some charities. Do your bit. Now, we come back to Sir William Beveridge and your good work in Bangladesh. Tell us something about that. Well, as I said that the Sir William Beveridge was my inspiration for the social work and he was my senior colleague. So, the work that I started there in Bangladesh is elder care or mm -hmm. care for the senior citizens. Right. It's not a care by, in Bangla, called Kazirbua. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. it is done by professionally trained people. Where are they trained? They are trained in Bangladesh, but Who the expert them? goes from here. Who trains them? The, there are British agencies, we mm -hmm. use them, mm -hmm. and we have got some um, uh, training companies they visit right. us. Is it and a free training? Also, gee, sorry. Is it a free training? Training is free, totally free, mm -hmm. yes. But that at the moment, the staff that we have, and also we are working on dementia. Right. Dementia is a new concept of Alzheimer's now. So we have got dementia trainers as well in Bangladesh, and also in other parts. We have got other branches in South Asia, right. as well as in Africa. <coughs> now, training for the, ba coming back to the Bangladeshi thing, because being a Bangladeshi myself, I was always prefer my country right. and the needs of that, you know. Although so when I did you decide to go to Bangladesh? I mean, 
uh, after you said that uh, Sir William Beveridge Foundation, you don't have much work here, but now mostly it's, it's active in Bangladesh. Yes, it's very active in Bangladesh and also India, mm -hmm. uh, and also one African countries that right. we have. But we are also a consultative status holder of the United Nations because right. the care model, culturally appropriate care model, right. that has been introduced by me and mm -hmm. that was my mm -hmm. brainchild mm -hmm. has been accepted. Right. by the United Nations, some of the member countries, which can create tremendous number of jobs with shorter training and bigger training and be a part of the society. So empowerment is also taking place there. Right. So that model has taken very seriously by uh, United Nations. Um, does, this, does, does your model, model, and you mentioned uh, United Nations, does it somehow include the this this calamity on our eastern border, the Rohingya population that has come over to Bangladesh. These are two dimensions of that, but the, you see the thing, one thing probably will be good, that is the care side I'm talking mm -hmm. about, personal mm -hmm. care on physiotherapy right. or neurotherapy. Right. Because the Rohingya problem that is happening, which is a historical problem, and also animosity between Buddhists and others, mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, and a fear that um, in Bangla we call Jujur Bhai, I don't know the English of that. <laughs> but uh, the Buddhist feeling that Rohingyas are a threat. But this historical problem was always there, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. The problem was historical. Is the William Beveridge Foundation involved in some good work there? Yeah. I mean, Arakan was there since Mughal period, mm -hmm. okay? And Rohingyas were there for generations after generations. Now, all on a sudden, this problem has started long time ago, mm. and then in 78, 77, and then 2016. No, my question is, are you doing any work there? In Rohingya areas? Yeah. No, no. Not. We are based in the city. We are based totally in the city, el uh, helping lonely elders left uh -huh. in the house. Uh -huh. That's the thing, you know. But only thing that you say is similarity, <coughs> because mm -hmm. one of the, w within the care work model, one item probably, I was thinking, and talking to my country director over there, that whether a makeshift physiotherapy center could be established for mm -hmm. the people who are coming to Ukiya and Cox's Bazaar, and we can help. So we are working on it, probably my another two weeks time, we'll have two to three physiotherapists because a lot of people need is that kind of help. How yeah. do you finance yourself? Right, there are two, three things. Some, we have got some asset over there in Bangladesh. Right. The initial asset that we started has come from, personally from me and my wife, mm -hmm. you know, and some money that I got from somewhere uh, uh, here you know, as a compensation to my some personal thing. So that was the initial investment. But the second investment was ongoing, uh, but that has been stopped or sabotaged by the previous Tower Hamlet's Council bosses uh, or political leaders because they wanted some bribe from me, I refused. Well, we but don't know. Now, <laughs> you can't say now, that. No. thing has been financed from other charitable sources uh, from America, from uh, international charities, mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. Britain. But I don't go and uh, make television appeal, no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How much of the charity that you collect, the percentage goes on administration? All goes course. to, uh, only about 7.8%. Only and bare minimum. And 93% and, and almost goes almost to? goes to the charities. Charity. We have got one wing Mm -hmm. that we serve the same services to richer classes of Bangladesh. But they, they are also lonely. Their son and daughter will never come from Canada or from uh, other parts of the world to see right. their moms. Right. So they leave their elders with us. Right. So we are also earning some money from there, but that totally goes to right. the non-charitable. Have, uh, have, you, have you thought of uh, setting up care homes rather than sending your people to their no, houses? No, I have never thought of uh, creating a care home in Bangladesh because I think it is, uh, it would be an injustice to our elders who have right. given us love and affections and then 
for some reason we put them into care home. Right. They got to be within the family as a part of the family member until they leave this world. Well, so great to have uh, you here and it was uh, great talking to you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. All the best wishes. Thank you very much. With your so social you. work and charity work. Thank you, sir. You are most welcome. Thank you for being with us. I hope that you have enjoyed the show as much as we have. And that's the way it looks this evening. See you next week. Same time, same channel. Take care.